all my feeders. Hello and welcome back to Jack's Mini Zoo and today we're going to be looking at all my feeder pets. So these are all my feeder pets right here, I have a lot. And what we're going to be doing is, out of all the six feeder pets that I have, is rating them worst to best in my opinion. Other people may think differently but this is just my opinion on what I what I prefer. <laughs> So why these are the worst feeder insects? So because these are the loudest animal I have in my collection. So out of every single animal I own, these are the ones that give me the most headache because of how loud they can be. That's why I keep them in a completely separate room to what I have all my other animals in because these will make the most racket. And also these are escape artists. So what, when I feed my uh, wolf spider, I'll take one out and put it in but I'll be very careful not to let any escape and then I'll be walking around the house the next day and bam there's one on the floor and I swear that I'll never let any out but somehow these do escape and that's what I hate about them they just keep escaping they're loud and because I only feed them like I'll only feed a couple maybe three or four a week and there's so many of them like there's not much point in having so many but that's why I just they're not my favorite so let's go on to the next one. Okay, so next on the list is the bean weevil. So these are actually relatively good um, feeder pets, but these are so low down on my list because only one of my animals eats it, and it's the uh, baby, uh, baby Mexican red knee sling. So because he's only a baby, he'll eat like one or two maybe three a week and there's so many there's about a hundred in this culture that there's not much point in having so many whereas with a if 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 you were a tarantula collector and have loads of baby slings then the whole culture would be perfect but seeing as I've only got one there's not actually much point in me having this whole big culture but um also the these are so small that they'll actually just escape through these little holes which is not the best either because you don't want any flying around your room but that's why they're second on the worst list, but moving on. Okay, so now on the list is the waxworms. And the waxworms are actually really good uh, feeder pets, except for the fact that they are so fattening. So my only, the only animal that actually eats these of my collection is Emerald My Leopard Gecko. And these are as a treat, so I feed her maybe two, one or two uh, each week, because they are so fattening. These are pretty much the chocolate of human, so if this was a food, it would be chocolate or sweets for us, because of how much they love them. She would easily eat the whole pot of these 50, because they are her favourite, but it's just not good for them, because it can make them m way too fat, and it can just... It's just not, it's just horrible for them. Well, except like once in moderation, obviously. But also another downside is that there are 50 in here. So I feed her one, maybe two a week, and that's 50 in here. So I don't need 50 if I've only got one. If you have a big collection, you still probably don't need 50 because these are as treats. You shouldn't be feeding them as, as a main source of food. But... They are like easy to keep, like you just can keep them in this little pot, you don't really have to feed them, you don't have to water them, it's it's dead easy, dead easy to keep. But that's that's my only downside really of how many there actually are in here compared to what I feed her. And also these actually will turn into cocoons and moths, so they don't last too long either. So having 50 and using not even half in the matter of time that these turn from these the worms to the moth it's just pointless really so that that's my opinion obviously but let's get on to that okay so 
so right here I have number four so these are my locust so the locust are actually really good uh, feeder insects because well both my big carnivorous creatures my leopard gecko and my scorpion these are uh, absolutely love them so I will feed my scorpion one once a week maybe twice maybe two a week because two big ones because he's actually quite a big scorpion and he'll wolf them down he loves them and my leopard gecko I put three or four in every other night and she loves chasing them she'll get every single one within the matter of 10 minutes but the only downside is you do have to keep them in quite a big enclosure if you do have quite a lot because they actually can get really big and they are really difficult to breed so I've tried breeding these and it just didn't work out so that's why I have to keep um, buying them in every month or two so that is another downside but overall these are probably probably if I was to say my favorite over like my favorite for feeding these would be but like I have got two more down here which are better than these for other reasons but these are very good um, feeder insects if you can breed them that would be even better that these would probably be at the top if these were so much easier to breed but seeing as they're not it's more about the way it's more about that you have to import them in well not import you have to buy them and that's really why they're uh, fourth so let's get on to uh, the second I mean the So in this big bucket here, I have my uh, Dubia Roach Culture. So these are definitely up at the top. These are the uh, second best, so number five. And uh, this is because they are, my uh, both my carnivorous animals love them. So also when my tarantula, Mexican Redney, gets bigger, these will be fed on these, these Dubia Roaches. Um, and uh, they are easy to breed as well. So I keep them in, I don't know, a small kind of small tub because I'm only just starting out breeding them but I have quite a lot already and they eat they eat a lot they do eat quite a lot because I do have quite a few so that I'll put them on lettuce fresh fruit every day and then I've also got these jelly pots which are just constantly in there just in case they want to snack and everything and then I will occasionally miss their um, enclosure just to give them a bit more water but yeah I have loads already and that's why they're up at the top really because they're quite cheap to buy if you were to buy them and not breed them but if you were to breed them they are dead easy to breed and great feeder pets so what more do you really want all you do have to provide is kind of egg cones because they like to hide in the dark spaces and it makes them feel more comfortable and then lots of food because they will like to eat a lot okay so on to the uh, best <laughs> number six so number six is the best feeder insect that I own so this little setup that I did make in a uh, other video which I'll put up here I think either one of these um, is the mealworms so this is my mealworm breed that I made so this is where the beetles go up at the top here and then what then I have mesh at the bottom and then what they'll do is they'll dig down to the mesh, lay their eggs, the eggs will drop through into this bottom layer, and then in, in amongst this bottom layer are baby mealworms and large mealworms, which then I'll just pick out and put them and feed them to my, feed them to my animals. And also in this tub here are the pupae. So these are what the mealworms turn into when just before they turn into beetles. But yeah, these are my favourite pets, because favourite feeder insects, because of how easy they are to keep and breed. So these are even easier to breed than the Dubia roaches because all you need to provide is oats because they are like, because they will eat these oats as well but then also provide fresh greens and like watery greens so they actually get the uh, water that they need and just constantly supply that like the uh, Dubia roaches. And um, yeah, so you don't actually have to uh, take anything out except for the pupae so that all you have to do is take the pupae out and put them in with the beetles uh, not with the beetles you have to wait until they become a beetle then put them in because the beetles will actually eat the pupae which you don't want that unless you do provide enough food 
but so I provide a lot of food, a lot of fresh greens nearly every day because it's just good for them and it's so as long as you have healthy feeder insects then those healthy feeder insects will actually go to healthy uh, reptiles so if you don't have healthy feeder insects then the, the, the reptiles that you're feeding them to will, will not get the right nutrition for them so that's why I like to feed my feeder insects nearly every day with fresh greens but yeah these are my favorite because they don't make any noise they they don't they don't escape they don't fly they you know they can't escape because they can't even climb this lid this is open they can't climb and yeah they're so easy to breed so that's that's it for the day so thank you for watching Jack's Mini Zoo make sure to like and help me get to 100 subscribers by subscribing and um, I'll see you in the next